okay so today our topic is the pharmacology of bradykinins so bradykinin is also local hormones or it is also peptide so it consists of the nine amino acids that promotes the inflammations so bradykinins it's mainly promotes the inflammation by causing or by increasing the accumulations of the fluid at the site of the injury so bradykinin it mainly released from the muscles during the asthma attack so during asthma attack the muscles are sensitized by antigen that is ige so due to that the bradykinin is formed or the bradykinin can release from the muscle along with the prostaglandin angiotensin and along with the uh, that is kinin then even the along with the others autocoids like serotonin so they are released from the muscle due to antigens that is ige they can stimulate the muscle so due to stimulations of muscle certain kinogens are religious so those kinogens they can activate the factor 12 so this is the hagman factor or coagulation factor already you learn in the blood coagulation chapters okay so that active hagman factor it can enhance the synthesis of the bradykinin so that synthesized bradykinin it mainly dilate the large blood vessels like arterioles by release of the prostacycline nitric oxide and ddrf but so like that so this is the your artery so then so this is the capillary branches then after so the deoxygenated blood is collected with the one saying capillaries and passed towards the vein so this is the arteries and this is the capillaries so this containing both mixed blood oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood and capillaries so they are present near to the metabolic tissue so these are the veins so here the bradykinin it can increase the size of the blood vessels especially arterioles by release of the prostaglandin i2 or release of the nitric oxide or release of the edrf that is endothelium dependent releasing factor so these three factors that is i pg i2 the nitric oxide then edrf they increase the size of the arterioles so size of the artery increases the flow of the blood toward the cell is also increases so due to that the more fluid can enter in the systemic capillaries and bradykinin in another side it can causes the contractions of the vanals so due to contraction the size is decreases so as the size decreases the flow of the fluid from the veins so that was decreases so due to that the fluid can be accumulated in the site of the capillaries where the injury can be occur so like that the bradyl canine it can causes the accumulation of the fluid at the site of the injury or inside the capillaries by causing contractions of the vein through a release of the prostaglandin e2 and it can dilate the arterioles by releasing the prostaglandin i2 nitric oxide and endothelium dependent releasing factor so due to that here the more fluid can be entered due to increase the size of blood vessel but here the contraction is occurs or size is decreases and fluid cannot be go away from here so due to that here once again the fluid can be more accumulated so due to accumulations of more fluid so here the infiltration is occurs from the capillaries so that fluid can enter in the cells especially in the uh, smooth muscle so like in the lung so lungs also same mechanism present so this release bradykinin it can dilate arterioles and constrict the veins so due to that so the more fluid can be accumulated in the cells of the alveoli then after that the capillary permeability increases that is known the infiltration here the fluid can be enter in the lung so due to that the bronchospasm is occurs or the fluid can be accumulated in the inside the lung under the influence of the bradykinin the same mechanism is occurs in the covid 19 patients so like that so the bradykinin it can dilate the larger blood vessels 
and constrict the veins. It mainly dilates arteries, releasing of prostacyclin nitric oxide (EDRF) and constrict the veins by release of the prostaglandin F2, not a E2. Okay, so here, so due to this mechanism, the escular permeability increases. So that is responsible for to fluid can be build up in the lungs patients with the coronavirus infection. So that formed bradykinin, it can causes the leukocyte addition. That is the accumulations of the leukocyte in the particular places. So that mechanism or phenomena was known as a chemotaxis, and chemotaxis is responsible for to damage of the tissues. If the tissues were damaged, means the organ was fair where the tissue was damages and also it can decrease the blood pressure by showing hypotension because it can dilate the arteries so we are consider the blood pressure regarding the pressure in the arteries only and here the bradykinin it can dilate the arteries so due to that it can decrease the blood pressure or it can shows the hypotension and the bradykinin it also causes the edema that is the fluid build up in particular site where the bradykinin can be religious so due to that the bradykinin can participate or responsible for to cause of the following disease like rhinitis it is one type of allergy of the nose then asthma it is respiratory tract infection pancreatitis inflammations of the pancreas and synovitis that is the joint problems or fluid so that can present in the joint so that can be inflamed due to more uh, chemotaxis or leukocyte addition so that condition was known as the synovitis and as well as it can cause the hereditary angioedema that is the swelling of the blood vessels in the leg or in the brain or in anywhere so the blood can be swelled due to uh, fluid infiltrations or increase the capillary permeability so like that the bradykinin is involved in the to cause of the various disorders especially related to the respiratory tract infections so now we learn regarding the biosynthesis of the bradykinins so the bradykinins is mainly formed from the precalicarin so precalicarin is a one peptide it is present in the blood vessels and tissues so during the tissue injury or blood vessel damage so from the wall of the blood vessels or endothelium so this precalicarin can be religious so that precalicarin is converted into calicarin by a factor that is activated hagman factor so it is the blood coagulation factor okay so this factor can activate can convert precalicarin into calicarin so these are the peptide inactively found in the blood vessels or wall of the blood vessels are inside the tissue so during the trauma or during the tissue injury or burn cases or any blood vessel damages so these are religious due to ruptures of the tissues or ruptures of the blood vessels so were also the tissue factor or hagman factors are present so that can convert precalicarin into calicarin and further calicarin it can convert kinogen into bradykinins so you know that is high molecular weight kinogen can converted into bradykinin so that released bradykinin it can increases the synthesis of the prostaglandin like f2 and like prostaglandin i okay so through a prostaglandin i it can dilate the blood vessels through a prostaglandin f2 it can constrict the blood vessels then due to release of prostaglandin in the arteriole it can causes the vasodilatation so due to vasodilatation the blood pressure or peripheral vascular resistance is decreases so it's like that the bradykinin can be synthesized from the precalicarin under the influence of the activated hagman factor that is a tissue factor so it is it is a coagulation factors and here the two enzymes are there that is the kinase group enzyme and ace that is angiotensin converting enzyme so these two enzyme it can metabolize the released bradykinin into inactive peptides okay so automatically the bradykinin can be metabolized in the presence of the kinase enzyme in the presence of the angiotensin converting enzyme when we are using the 
ACE inhibitors for treatment of the hypertension. So nowadays the WHO or World Health Organization they advise. So those patients having the COVID for them, you do not administer the AC inhibitors like a losartan or virampil, captopril, venalapril. Okay, so these are inhibit the enzymes. So for treatment of the hypertension, so that enzyme is required for the formations of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. If the patient having hypertension and he is suffering from the COVID, if you are administered the captopril, analapril, eosinophil as an AC inhibitor for management of the hypertension, so then the patient is also die because so these inhibitors so they inhibit the, this enzyme that is AC and AC enzyme is required for metabolism of the bradykinin and lack of this enzyme the bradykinin cannot be metabolized and the bradykinin in the lungs it can enhance the vascular permeability or capillary permeability so due to that the more fluid can be accumulated in the lungs in the covid patient when the covid patients are using AC inhibits so that's why so during this period if you having the doubt regarding the covid symptoms in your parents or family members or any friends so check the prescriptions whether prescriptions having AC inhibitors or not like captopril, enalapril, eosinophil so all pril so they are belongs to AC inhibitors or those drugs act through the RAS system you advise to them or suggest to doctor please avoid that drug if you are not avoid means the patient was die due to use of AC inhibitors not a COVID so like that nowadays the more patients are die those are suffering from the hypertension it means somewhere they having or they are using or they are on the therapy of the AC inhibitor so that is one of the risk factor for AC inhibitors in the COVID patients because they inhibit this enzyme AC that enzyme is required for the metabolism of cadicarin the bradycarin is less means then there is no fluid can be accumulated in the lungs so already in the covid the fluid can be accumulated under the influence of the bradycarin or local autocrats if you are using ac means that bradycarin cannot be metabolized then their actions can be longer durations then they are responsible for more accumulations of the fluid so that, like that as a for highly qualified pharmacist you should be suggested or you can any patient your neighbor or your relatives you can counsel them through a telephone you do not go there to visit personally through only telephonic you take their prescription and through a online you can find out which drug the doctors are administered if the ac inhibitors is present means you to suggest the doctors or you order doctor please avoid it okay so this bradycarin it is acts on the certain receptor so those are known as the bradycarin receptors so these are mainly classified in two types bradycarin 1 receptors and bradycarin 2 receptors and both are G protein coupled receptors and bradycarin 1 receptors mechanism is it can enhance the accumulations of calcium by enhancing the phospholipase C enzyme activity and it is involved in the or bradycarin through a beta 1 receptor it can cause the inflammation trauma burns shock and allergy and bradycarin bradycarin 2 receptor it is also G protein coupled receptor its mechanism is it can activate the GQ PLC then uh, that is the phosphorus C then GI it can inhibit the adenylyl cyclase enzyme one side by activate the GQ through which it can enhance the phosphorus C enzyme activity so that enzyme is responsible for formations of IP3 and DAG then IP3 DAG is responsible for the accumulations of the calcium and it also activate the GIG proteins so that is a G inhibitory protein so due to this through this protein it can inhibit the adenyl cyclase activity okay one side it can increase the calcium level was through one protein and another protein can <laughs> decrease the calcium level by inhibiting the adenyl cyclase through this receptor the body can can participate in the vasodilatations that is the dilatations of the veins then edema the accumulations of fluid smooth muscle spasm then pain fiber stimulation it can stimulate the pain sensations or pain fibers so due to that it is participating in the cause of the pain so now we learn regarding the actions and role of the bradycanine so the bradycanine mainly acts on the cvs so where it can show the potent vasodilators by releasing the 
EDRF, nitric oxide and PGI through which it can show the vasodilatation of the arterial that can decrease the blood pressure are helpful for the treatment of the hypertension. Then it can enhance the capillary permeability so due to that it can cause the angioedema the swelling of the blood vessels. So in the bronchiles or in the respiratory tract it can show the bronchoconstriction effect and it is involved in the cause of cause of the asthma or COPD or bronch bronchospasm or even it can enhance the fluid accumulations in the lungs by acting through bronchus by enhancing the capillary permeability in the lungs. In the smooth muscle it can show the contraction especially uterine muscle contractions. Then other effects like the bradycanine can participate in the cause of inflammation by causing the accumulation of the fluid at the site of the injury due to that it can produce the pain and edema. It also elicited the patent pain by stimulating the nociceptive nerve apparent fibers through which it can participate in the to cause of the pain. So this is the actions of the or physiological role of the predicanines. Once again thank you.